by trees. Welcome to Twin Peaks, The Gifted and the Damn. My name is Bubba. You can find me on Twitter at Fit and Trim. That's F I T T E N T R I M at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And with me, as always, is someone who loves buying me drinks mm-hmm. at the Roadhouse Pop Up. It's Hell Mork. Mork, yeah. how you doing? Oh, man, oh, man. I hope one of the Renault brothers is working tonight. They know that they can find me at Extraordinary on Twitter. That's Extraordinary with a W in front of the final R. And, yeah, we've got a busy night ahead of us, Bubba. We do. We are about to walk out the door, listeners. We're mm-hmm. going to go a mile down the street. Mm-hmm. We're going to the Roadhouse Ow. Los Angeles pop-up, a pop-up bar restaurant like based no other. on the Roadhouse of Twin Peaks. Yes. Expensive drinks, yes. expensive food, including Garmin Bosia's on the menu. Can you believe it? Well, Possibly Twin Peaks horrible. celebrities. <laughs> you don't like cream corn? Uh, well, not the way that they serve it. <laughs> and so what we're going to do, this is going to be a slightly odd podcast. We're going to give you an audio tour mm-hmm. yes. of this Twin Peaks pop-up. Go to Love our it. Facebook page, facebook.com slash double P podcast. That's the word double, the single letter P, the word podcast, plural. Mm-hmm. Facebook.com com slash double p podcast to see some of the photos that will go with this audio tour yes and so after we give away some prizes the rest of this podcast will be as if you were there and had your eyes closed the entire time close your eyes and imagine that you are at the corner of sparkwood and 21 all right but before we a little further down the street (laughs) before we drive down to this pop-up and finish up the podcast though we've been talking about for several weeks some of these wonderful prizes we want to give to our double l's double l's well that's what we like to call you guys the loyal listeners people who have been kind enough to retweet our tweets to share our posts on our facebook page about brand new episodes of twin peaks the gifted and the damned podcast and so we have a bunch of names in this pot We're going to be giving away today. We're just going to be giving away two of all our prizes. We have so many. We're going to ring in the new year with giving away the rest of these prizes. But today, to end 2017, a year which gave us new Twin Peaks, we are giving away two of the biggest prizes we have. That's all we got. First off, we're giving away a copy of Mark Frost, the final dossier, autographed by Mark Frost, as well as Ray Monroe, Phil Bisbee. Lorraine, who got stabbed by Ike the Spike. (laughs) Sweet Lorraine. Officer Cindy Knox. Deputy Chad. Deputy Chad. The woman at the casino who brought around the coin bucket. I keep forgetting Sabrina Sutherland's character's name. I apologize. So a bunch of Twin Peaks celebrities. Lots of good stuff. Autograph this copy of the final dossier. We're giving it to you because you've been kind enough. And resilient enough. To retweet and share our posts. Mork, reach into the prize bowl. Let's see who wins this big prize. Okay, hang on. I have to uh, ascend a ladder (laughs) that is set up against the prize bowl because it's such a large bowl. Get in that prize bowl. bowl. Here we go. Who's going to be the winner? Hang on. And. Here we go. We have. Ah, yes. At Peas Porridge Hot. uh, Oh, wow. Mr. Kyle Stewart. Hey, Kyle. Yay. Congratulations. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash double P podcast. Give us a mailing address. We will mail out this incredible exclusive copy of the final dossier right to you. Mm -hmm. Now let's give away a second awesome prize. What is that? We're going to give away a Blu-ray copy of Twin Peaks, The Return, Season 3, a.k.a. a limited event series. This is not only a Blu-ray copy of all 18 parts and all the special features that you love, but we are bringing this Blu-ray with us Mm -hmm. to the Roadhouse L.A. pop-up restaurant. Yes. And so... Contraband. We are going to have, if there are any Twin Peaks celebrities there, and I think there will be, mm-hmm. we're going to have them sign the Blu-ray. And Whether so they this, like it or not. This will be another exclusive you can only get by listening to the Gifted and the Damned podcast. So, I'm going to reach into the bowl this time. You reach. Climb up that ladder. I'm going to pick a winner, but for this, I'm going to make listeners stay till the very end of the podcast. Oh. I'm going to pull the name right now, Okay. and I'm going to edit this person to be, oh, wow, this is a great name. The winner of the Blu-ray is 
edit, tune in to the end of the podcast. <laughs> Everybody, if you've been kind enough to retweet us or to share our Facebook page, we've got, as you must know from listening to our podcast, we have so many prizes. We'll be giving them away in 2018. Can I mention one uh, little cool thing about the uh, Blu-rays that we'll, were given away? Yeah, what about them? These are not Blu-rays that we uh, went down to Best Buy uh, or ordered on Amazon. <laughs> okay. These What's are, wrong with those Blu-rays? The, well, those are delicious Blu-rays. Okay. And, and from a technical standpoint, there's no difference. But <laughs> as a matter of fact, yeah. this is kind of cool. One of the fun things that happens when you do a podcast that uh, people seem to listen to seem and to. tweet about either uh, in frustration or joy or <laughs> anger. Yeah especially when Mark doesn't make a point. But this was sent to us by our good friends at Showtime. Right. Well, specifically, it could be a giant division because on the... Well, yes, on the, still. On the press release that came with it that we will send to you, it was from Showtime Entertainment, CBS Home Entertainment, and Paramount. So a lot of people probably financed Twin Peaks Season 3. Oh, yeah. They all came together for this Blu-ray. Once again... Listen to the end of the podcast to find out if you won. If you didn't win, we love you and know they're going to be. We're going to be giving away more autographed copies of the final dossier. Possibly more. We're trying to get more autographed copies of a secret history, as well as we've got Twin Peaks Funko toys. We got a bunch of stuff. Oh, we've got to yeah. empty our prizes. We're going to get rid of them. Clear it out as the podcast continues. All right. So now we take you to the Twin Peaks Roadhouse pop up. All right. So, Mork, what exact time is it? It is exactly 8.04. Four minutes after our reservations for the Roadhouse LA was supposed to allow us in. We're in line, I would guess, behind about 12 to 15 people, many of them scruffy-looking men. Nobody here has shaved tonight on a Sunday night here in L.A. This place is just half a block down from the Double R pop-up here on Melrose Avenue. What's cool slash bizarre, looking where we're going to be let in, it looks like you're let in through the gift shop, (laughs) but also you enter through red curtains. What do you think, Mark? You ready for your experience at this expensive pop-up? I don't think I'm ready for it, but I am. I am looking forward to seeing the uh, the new mic, the new arm, sponsored by T-Mobile. Inside this place is it's being held here. The double R pop-up was in an old Johnny Rockets that had stood empty for a while. This pop-up is going to take place in a believe a restaurant that used to be called like the umbrella company or the umbrella cafe i think it's still in business but they're closed for the end of 2017 to do this twin peaks pop-up nobody in costume as far as i can tell but so many people are wearing flannel that it could just be they're 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 attending the typical roadhouse yeah no there are definitely some woodsmen in line intentionally or not we don't know but there are some i'm counting at least four all right, so we're g- your first part of your live tour is to see how long this line is. We'll be back once we're finally allowed inside. So a short update at 8.21. Uh, so we are now still on time for our 8 p.m. reservation. Bubba, I have counted 57 no parking signs, 212 parking meters, and 72 uh Restaurants that serve a combination of pizza, ramen, or uh, ginkgo bilboa. Yeah, we could have eaten if we were willing to eat pizza or ramen or anything here on Melrose Avenue. Now there are officially only eight people in front of us in line. The other people have been let in. Who knows when we'll be able to enter. For those of you keeping track, trying to time this up, where we were exactly on this date, There's five minutes left in the fourth quarter of Dallas 17, Oakland 17, as we watch the game while we wait to get inside through a TV in the pizza restaurant here on Melrose Avenue. In the football game as well as on the street, it is fourth and one. We're here with the security guard here at the Roadhouse Pop-Up. deputy. (laughs) Sorry, security deputy. So how many people, do you know how many people get in at one time? Uh, Anywhere between 35 and 40. 
Oh, and we just had a major accident on Melrose. Holy smokes, that is hardcore accident. You just heard it here. Not as bad as uh, Richard Horn driving over that little boy, but pretty. Ooh, ooh, that person's bumper in front of their car. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. Well, that was terrible. So we're the very last people to get in at the 8 o'clock reservation. People are so angry, they're causing wrecks here, but apparently they're just clearing tables. I hope, I hope, Deputy Tony, that you don't feel guilty about not letting us in. Because if you had let us in, that car accident probably wouldn't have happened. I, I agree with you. I feel guilty as a <laughs> sin about that, but nothing I can do. Until we can clear those tables, I can't let you guys in. Man, oh man, you are like Mr. C of Melrose Avenue. Cold-hearted, clear-eyed. They're either clearing the table or somebody's taking a long time sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here. Well, what time is it, oh, Bork? Yeah. We're still outside. We're about to get inside. We're going to be the last. 8.31. 8.31. We're going to be the last to leave just to We're teach probably. everybody a, a <laughs> lesson. All right. We're back. We're live. I see some... Now, this is... What is this? Well, we're semi-live. We we're live. Now, this is a, pl- this is a placemat or... Uh, it's a skateboard. It's a skateboard. Okay. want the truth. What have what been the top sellers today? Um, the t-shirts. Which one the, in particular? Um... Just all of them. It's hard to say. They're like diehard fans, you know. You can't really just narrow it down to one. What's here that? What's here that wasn't at the uh, the diner a couple weeks ago? Um, we've added some things like the candle, the one-eyed Jack's roulette cup, which has been a great seller. You Ooh. you can drink and play. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also been selling the sheriff's the tote. Yep, yeah. the sheriff's tin totes with the thermos it comes in a set it's great seller. what's been uh, what's been like the most somebody's dropped down it's like somebody bought everything what's Is been like the been over ten dollars no 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 come on what's been like the most somebody spent most, i would say it's been like about four hundred dollars and our price point ranges from like the most expensive thing you can get is probably like $50. No, 200, right? 200 yeah. for the costumes. Yeah. So actually, they did buy a costume. They're all handmade, um, and there's only like a small run of the costume. Limited. Limited. Damn, that is an awful lot of money. Holy smokes. Uh, I noticed... $400 is nothing. Sorry, that's a good point. Five, 400 bucks is nothing for these handmade you give costumes. Me $400. You'll give me no, you said it was nothing. Well, if it's something of value and think about it, like, we're living in the era right now of, like, Twin Peaks, you know? Like, this isn't going to exist in, like, a hundred years. We don't know. Well, but the cast is alive right now, you know? Like, it's, it's priceless. That, that is a great argument for spending four hundred dollars here, which is nothing. IPhone, you know, why buy an iPhone that for like eight hundred dollars? That means nothing. That's a damn. That's a damn good, good point. point. Touche. We, we, you've shut us up. Crap for like hundreds of dollars. That means absolutely nothing. Thank you so much. All right, we finally got the table. What's the time, Mork? Uh, we are right on time for our 8 p.m. reservation at 8.36. All right, we're going in. So uh, we just sat down, and Amelia... Diane. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan has guided us to a very That's special the perch. They are the best. I picked it myself. We're next to a tree and a chair. And uh, what's good here, Ryan? I would recommend the Twin Leaks. Uh, say again. The Twin Leaks. And tell us about those desserts. Those desserts. Come on. The donuts are pretty good. Um, I had one bite of the cherry pie. Someone insisted that I try it, but I also wanted to try it. I got my chance. Um, some of the cocktails. Let's talk about cocktails. I've only tried two of them. The Laura Palmer and the Fire Walk With Me. What's more likely to get me drunk? 
I've heard any of them. <laughs> Have you seen her? I've just been told, they're like, ooh, those are strong. Now I'm ready to go to the gift shop. And I'm like, yes, you are. Go live it up. Ryan's getting commissions here. We love it. Ryan, off the top of your head, could you tell us what is in a fish in the percolator cocktail that's being sold for $18? What is in it? Correct. I know there's crushed ice. And that's that's all you need. Correct. Oh, really? Correct. Oh, well, it's crushed ice, black strap rum, bourbon, cold brew coffee, maple syrup served in a small percolator. That is fantastic. It's a coffee cocktail, Black as Midnight, on a moonless night. Black as Midnight, I forgot that word. Yeah. That's, we, we all did. Now, is Jack Nance here tonight? He's not. That's too bad. It's a tough question to answer in spirit of some so- sort. He's watching. Yeah. He is watching. What was your favorite part of Twin Peaks The Return? Part 8. When Laura, with the giant in that room, and the little Laura orb goes to, you know, it's hard to explain. <laughs> Why do you Part think eight. we're here? You're supposed to explain. We came so you I can explain. I'm sorry. I was, you know, you should ask your waiter. He probably knows less than I do. <laughs> That's not a selling point. He could give you a more colorful guess. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Ryan, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. And that's a fantastic scarf. Sorry, sorry. This should have been like our first question. Uh, Ryan, before we let you go, what is your official capacity tonight? What do you call, what are you, are Yeah, I'm the bouncer. Hell yeah. Uh-huh. I was supposed to kick you out, but instead I let you sit down. Okay. Yeah. Epic fail. <laughs> Ryan's been fired here. Thank you so much, Ryan. All right, so we're seated at a back table. Uh, there's a on one side of the restaurant has the chevron floors, and sure enough, a tree. I guess we're on the back patio of this place. There is a bar, and one one side of the restaurant is entirely red curtains. The other side here of the patio, you see wood paneling, as well as the infamous neon sign of the roadhouse with the bang bang bar it actually uh it looks pretty good doesn't it oh it looks fantastic and so now we're gonna put down the microphone for a bit oh well maybe we won't i was gonna say we're about to order maybe some drinks what should we get hi guys welcome my name is mr c i will be your server this evening uh what should you drink definitely alcohol uh we have a beautiful menu guys very creative um we have our, obviously mr c gets to business yeah well, let's do this we're going to do two drinks, guys. Uh, that's your first round. We're going to order your dessert entrees, and we're going to order your desserts all at the same time. Wow. Uh, as you can see here, we have put a lot of thought and effort and, and research into our drinks, Hold our the food, and sure. our desserts as well, guys. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, Laura Palmer drinks. We got Killer Bob. We got Fire Walk With Me, the actual Fire Walk With Me signature drink, which comes on fire. Uh, then we have the Dr. Jacoby crazy, wacky, kooky uh, cocktail with lots of things on top of it. And a little side of spicy Czech mix, because he likes to eat his Czech mix. Um, guys, we also have uh, entrees that are gorgeous. The steak is beautiful. Um, we have a, uh, the uh, double R, which is a beautiful chicken breast with a nice cheese sauce on there. And then we have uh, a nice uh, salad if you want to do something like a warm salad. I have a leek salad. Uh, but definitely take your time to look at the menu, guys. It's very thought out, so it's fun. Have some fun with it. I don't have one thing that I don't like on the menu. So If you could only order one thing on it, what would you order? Depends on my mood. Right now, I am a little hungover from last night, so I would probably do a big burger, the, the meatloaf burger. Nice, big, fat, juicy. It is ground to order, so uh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's not, you know, free ground. We ground it as we as we order it. So, yeah. All right. That sounds delicious. Yeah, Thank you. Delicious, guys. Why don't I give you a couple minutes and then yeah. I'll be back to take your order. That'd be so right, dope. Thank you. It's now 8.52 for our 8 p.m. reservation. <laughs> we are here with two fellow travelers. Their names could be Richard and Linda, but they are, in fact... Rebecca. And, and David. Rebecca and David, Bubba has some questions for you. 
Yeah. Yes, I do. So I, we were talking, as soon as we sat down, we wanted to know what they had to drink because, to be honest, it's an awesome looking uh, rum drink. She got the log lady. So before we get into the return, uh, why don't you tell all our listeners, and I'm going to hand you the mic, describe the log lady as an alcoholic beverage. It's really Christmassy. It was sweet and alcohol-y together with cranberries on the top and a rosemary garnish and a lot of frosted ice. It was very delicious. All right, and remind me what you had to drink again. I had the fish in the percolator. It sounds so delicious, but uh, what's it like? It tasted like strong coffee. It was it was a good, strong coffee cocktail. There is that no fish flavor other than a little Swedish fish on top, which is a cute touch, as, as was little mini pancakes on the side. All right, PP, you did good. All right, so now we have to get, uh, I, this is one of the first questions I asked Rebecca. What did you think about the end of the return? I hated it. Why? They didn't wrap up anything for me. I was waiting for everything to be wrapped up in a neat little bow, and I was really, I, I just have so many questions. Don't know if I'll ever get the answers. You won't, but <laughs> you still. How did you feel about it? I I was amazed by it. It was, um, you know, it definitely wasn't what I would have envisioned leading leading up to the long-awaited return of Twin Peaks. But but it, but it's four months later, and I'm still thinking about it and mulling it over. And I probably will continue to to be thinking and, and debating about it for the next twenty years. You guys are literally the mirror of us on how we felt about it. So that is great. Uh, Mark, sorry. Dude. Oh, man. Ooh. He's getting a fire walk with me drink. It comes on fire. This is friggin' sweet. We are about to order our drinks. I am so excited. And nervous. And nervous. And, no. and yeah. terrified. terrified. Yeah, yeah. Let me go check out. Let me check out. Okay, so history is being made. Rebecca and David are about to drink their drinks. They have just cheered. And yes, I lifted the microphone. And the verdict is... It's really good. It's got, it's got some orange juice in there. <laughs> if... if you were going to create a toothpaste based on one of these drinks. Which one would it be? Oh, we're still we're still testing. David has an answer. Um, no, they, they both have potential as toothpaste for sure. But um, <laughs> but but the Woodsman has some good piney resinous qualities, which I appreciate. Gotcha. So the Woodsman toothpaste, maybe fire walk with me for more of a mouthwash. So sorry, you want everything. Right? Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. Could, you, could you imagine? Could you imagine the God of Light guy as, as your toothpaste spokesman with gleaming white teeth? He has perfect teeth. Terrible manners, but perfect teeth. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, we just had some food. We've just received our drinks. I got a theoretically Dr. Jacoby-inspired <laughs> shrimp and pineapple dish served in my little coconut that, I have to be honest, was delicious. This shrimp and coconut dish, incredible. Mark, why don't you tell the double L's about what you ordered for some food? Well, I ordered one of Jerry's baguettes, and I think I got one of, uh, I think it would be more aptly described as one of Louis's uh, uh, lunchtime snacks. The baguette was not as large as what we saw in season one. Uh, there was a little bit of brie on it. It wasn't pure brie. And there was a fried egg, which was not in Jerry's, so I'll, I'll take that as a win. There were some radishes, which I've learned are a superfood, so that's, that is a bonus. But um, it did not drive me as crazy as those baguettes seemed to drive Ben and Jerry back in, uh, in season one. Now, I also ordered a fire walk with me. And I'll describe it as uh, a tall flaming ga <coughs> excuse me, a tall flaming glass of pain and uh, 
disjointed <laughs> emotions. It uh, it's it's pretty serious. It's very spicy. I'm afraid to look at what was in it, but it's a little bit of a. Uh, it was. I think there's some habanero. I think there might be a little bit of Tabasco and a, just a tiny bit of licorice, just to make it all worthwhile. So, uh, and Bubba has been drinking through a very wacky straw. He has been drinking the Laurel Palmer. And uh, by the way, this is the most drunk. The most drunk. This might be hard to believe, but this is actually the most drunk we've been while recording a podcast. I'm not sure that's true. We did several of the strain. Should have been medicated. Oh, okay. Sorry. This podcast. Uh, The Laura Palmer is a vodka-based drink. That's the only reason why I ordered it. Comes in a fun glass with a picture with Laura Palmer's homecoming photo attached to the glass via a rubber band. It's got a blackberry, got a fun straw. It's vodka and lemonade, and it's actually it's actually pretty good. A bit strong for someone who hasn't had too much food yet. Uh, we also have some, I got some donuts for dessert, so uh, we're doing pretty well so far. Uh, what are you pointing out, Mark? Oh, I was pointing out the exact ingredients. Oh, you, the you, Laura Palmer you. features strawberry-infused Grey Goose vodka, pink lemonade, and blackberry black tea. The Fire Walk With Me, also for $16, features Espalone Reposado Tequila, orange juice, grenadine, vanilla, and flaming skulls. I don't know what are in the flaming skulls, but they're flaming. Hey, uh, do you remember the drink they've sold out of already? What was what was that? Something about Bob, right? It was the Killer Bob that, thank God, they sold out of. Yeah, we don't want any of that here. So get here early if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna get Bob inside you. If you want a Bob Blob inside you, you got to get here early because the drink sells out. All right, we'll report back after the donuts. Bubba, you look a little. You green onions. The green onions. Yes, we were listening to Green Onions while watching Bubba Sweet. Bubba, you look a little. Uh, you know, a little dewy. Was that your cardio for the week? Yeah, I, I need to. I need to rest. I need to hydrate. Uh, so, uh, listeners, what just happened is they just started playing the Green Onions here at the Roadhouse Pop Up, and so I decided to go nuts and I grabbed a broom and started sweeping up the place. This was great because it was such a uh, in-universe joke. They gave me a free shot. It was actually pretty good, uh, but a very strong shot, as most shots are. Uh, so we have just tried the donuts, and i got to be honest, I guess I lucked out. Yeah, the donuts are great. The shrimp I got was great. Uh, we did pretty darn well. How did, how did you feel? How did you do? I think you did pretty darn well, Bubba. I'm not going to lie. I think you did great. And normally, i I got to say, I think everyone... All of our uh, all of our double L's, double L's, loyal listeners. Every single one of them and every single one of us has a has a unique talent that they are best in the world at. And I used to I used to think that I was best in the world at walking into a restaurant and ordering the best thing on the menu. And I hopefully tonight was the exception to the rule. But man, oh man, it was it was rough. For me, but not for Bubba, who got some deliciousness. He got a workout in. He got some free alcohol. This is fantastic. It is now 9.48 for our 8 o'clock reservation, so we've been sitting down for about 10 minutes. Yeah, we were probably supposed to bounce 18 minutes ago. Oh, well. Oh, are they kicking us out of here? Well, you know, it's I guess, 90 minutes. Well, let's drag it out. Let's... Let's treat them the way we treat our loyal listeners. <laughs> Let's make them kick us out of here. These donuts were really wonderful. So, uh, really fun experience. Uh, it, it, you really just come and you kind of have to provide as much as you can. You know, you live in the world. But it's been pretty fun. Pretty good. 
Mork, we've had our drinks, we've had food, we've had desserts. It's never nice to generalize, but what would you say about the crowd here? Any thoughts about the age range, the gender mix, the people? What do you think? Uh, you know, I look around, and most of the people here seem to be on dates, Bubba, except for us. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a wait a minute. These those two guys, they're they're two pairs of dudes they're right there. They're on a date. Okay, fair enough. Welcome. Right, they're on a date. Some people over there on a date. There seem to be a table of three dudes over there. What would you say about this? These three people right here. Is this a family and their daughter? What's going on here? You think? Let's let's guess. <laughs> After we've had drinks, we can guess. Let's hear. Uh, yes. The, no, it does look like a family. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess that it looks like parents and their daughter. I'm going to guess that the daughter got the parents into Twin Peaks. That's my bold prediction. All right. Now we got to play a game. Now you got to go ask him live on the podcast. All right. Mork, you ready? Go in. Let's see it. Go in there. Hey, can we interview you for our podcast about Twin Peaks? Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, so we do a we do a podcast about Twin Peaks, which <laughs> which is why we're all here tonight because of Twin Peaks, right? Exactly. Okay, so who got who addicted to Twin Peaks first? This fine lady right here got me into Twin Peaks. Who is this fine lady? This fine lady is my mother. Your mother... Help me out here. Christine. Christine! Okay. Yes. Christine, so you have taken your family down this this rabbit hole of Twin Peaks. What, what did they ever do to you to deserve that? Oh, they're so lucky. We are so lucky to be here. So, um, I used to watch Twin Peaks when it originally came out. Loved it. Huge fan. Yeah. Right? Had all the books, all the tapes. Cause that's what really? I had back in the day. Oh, my goodness. Not 8-track. They didn't have 8-track. No, no, no. No, no, no not Twin Peaks. So, I find it really great to... Um, be able to bring my daughter here and so we used to watch Twin Peaks when they were old enough to understand yeah that that's some that's it's it's intense though it's pretty intense yes. yeah I do who well who doesn't <laughs> how can you not except for the end of the end there right except for the end there you, you gave up on him at the end no, I never give up on Agent Cooper. Christine will never, ever give up. What about you, Mr. Christine? <laughs> Mr. Christine. Jeremy. I'm waiting for the dramatic pause of the music. Oh, yeah, it's great music. Yeah. Um, so you weren't even alive when the first Twin Peaks came out. Because you're not even 25. <laughs> Yeah, are you allowed to be in this adult establishment? She's allowed to be here, but she wasn't alive 25 years ago. Uh, so basically, if it wasn't for seasons one of two of Twin Peaks, then your lovely daughter wouldn't be here with us today, is what you're saying. It's all because of Twin Peaks that you were born. We didn't want to tell you, honey. It's hard to explain, you know, but... Oh, my God! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Who are you? You're my father? You're her father? I didn't know that. Oh, my God, we're in the red room. What is going on? I don't know. This is making a big shocker for all of us here tonight. That's right. But a good shock. We're going to find out. He's not your father. It's Agent Cooper. He could be, well, it could be Dougie Jones. It all started at One Eye, um, one eye Jacks. You guys met at One Eye Jacks? What is happening? 
It was Canada. It was the 80s. What are you going to do? Say no more. Say, say no more. Were you also a orthodontist who worked on automobiles? How come you? How do you know this? Well, I watch a lot of Twin Peaks. And her teeth are immaculate. They're very nice teeth. They're they're great teeth. Yeah. So that her teeth would look like Laura Palmer's teeth while she was alive. That's probably yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. That is what we want. Excellent. So, what was the best thing about... You waited 25 years for the return, Christine. What was the best thing about waiting all of that time? Really to introduce and watch it with my daughter. Little Christine. Little tiny Christina. Little tiny Christina. Zoe. This is Zoe. Hello, Zoe. Well... Nice to meet you. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks, podcast. So, had you heard about Twin Peaks before you were forced to watch it as a young child? <laughs> we tied her up. No, I, <laughs> I had Laura not Palmer. heard of it. <laughs> well, the hopefully, at her at hopefully her not. Cheeks. Hopefully not. And I hid behind the chair too. <laughs> well, yes, that I would hope. Yeah. I had not heard of it before. Uh, before I was shown. <laughs> so one day you just. Sit down on the couch next to your mom, and she starts showing you Twin Peaks. Is that that's how you were? I mean, she was pretty excited about it. You know, okay. she was always telling me it was one of her favorite shows, and we had had the books, and I, I read Laura Palma's diary. Actually. Ah, okay, all right, okay, okay. You know, I, I fell in love with it, of course. How can you sure? Know? No, I mean it's, but it's scary stuff, though. It's scary stuff. Now, okay. The Who? soundtrack. The soundtrack just has a special place in my heart. The Ennio, uh, what was about? Marchone? Marchone? How do you say his name? I don't know. The problem is Wait, what are we talking about? The music. I always got off on Julie Cruz. What do you think Julie Cruz is doing right now? I've asked myself that question more than once. Do you think she'll be here tonight? If she is, I don't even know what to say. If she is, I would be thrilled. So, we just started talking about Julie Cruz. And this is Julie Cruz singing right now, right? Yes. And that's what he said last night. He's like, oh my God, if Julie Cruz showed up and started singing, bing bang. Would you take a swing at her? With both arms, a big swing of love. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think how I'd ask her to sing blue velvet. And I know that's a little uh, sideways. But no, it's not. It's not at all. David Lynch. It. it well, you know. It's, it's definitely David Lynch. Yeah. Blue yeah. Velvet's my other favorite movie. That's a fun movie. My grandmother took me to see that. Uh, uh, your grandmother is in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, she is. What's your grandmother's name? Kathy May. Kathy May. She went and saw the movie in a theater, came home and said, as I was visiting her, and she said, I, you have to see this movie. Let's go right now. And I said, you just got back from seeing it. She's like, yeah, let's go. And so we went. That is fantastic. Were You, you had to be her favorite grandchild. Yeah, I, yes, of course, naturally. And so, um, so then I went and I, and I watched it with her, and I was like this, with my jaw just dropping, going, what the fuck? My grandma just brought me to see this. Did, this is awesome and bizarre. Did Kathy May ever spend any time at all with Dennis Hopper? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm sure my mom did. <laughs> oh, okay. Clown they call the Sandman. Yes. <laughs> that is a, the best family story I've ever heard. The only movie that my grandmother ever took me to on the same day that she saw it was Revenge of the Nerds. So, not. Yeah, it's okay. It's Revenge of the Nerds, not Blue Velvet. Well, look, I don't want to keep you guys from enjoying the lovely entrees that are coming this way. What did you order? Did you order your entrees yet? 
We're we didn't just, order we're any. Just, we're just drinking. Yeah, we're drinking and eating cherry pie. I'll Is that an option? They made us buy seven entrees. Well, well, well you know, we got a lot to broadcast. No, look. Broadcast. Well, look, this this has been a pleasure. Cheat Thank you. What's that? Cheat the system. Uh, someone has been listening to her mother. Thank you, guys. Have a great evening. Yeah. Careful, careful. People are falling over in excitement to avoid being interviewed. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Enjoy the cocktails. You too. This is Bubba here. It's what time is it, Mark? 10.05. It's 10.05. I feel a bit bad that none of the typical Twin Peaks celebrities are here, so this Blu-ray will go unsigned but a fun night here at the uh, Roadhouse pop-out. Don't you think so, Mork? Probably a lot more fun than most people had uh, in the show. So now here's the insert that we'll edit to the end of the podcast. The winner of this possibly autographed copy of Twin Peaks, a limited event series Blu-ray, is somebody who goes by at Betty Briggs TP. What? Betty Briggs on Twitter. She had to have known she what we were going to have do. Known. All right. So if you remember, it was Betty Briggs on Twitter who won this Twin Peaks Blu-ray. We apologize. It's not signed. But go ahead and go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash double P podcast, and give us a mailing address. We'd love to get this out to you. Listeners, if you didn't win this time, please remember that we're going to be giving away more signed copies of the final dossier, as well as Funko pop-ups in the coming weeks. My name's Bubba. You can find me on Twitter at Fit and Trim. That's F-I-T-T-E-N-T-R-I-M, at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And Mork is at Extraordinary. That's Extraordinary with a W in front of the final R. And we will see you next time on Twin Peaks. The Gifted. And the Damned. And the Flaming Alcoholic Drinks. Electrics. Electrics. Electrics.